Well, hello again, friends. We're friends, right? You're studying. I'm trying to help you. We're friends. By the way, all of this stuff can be found at www.nkinfinity.com. If you have not tried these problems already, please do so. I provided them to you. All you got to do is go to NK Infinity, click on New York State Teachers, and go down here to review. They're in there. They're in there for you. Well, we're working on... Ooh, I don't have the answer key up for... All right, so normally there's the blank test. Just click on that. There it is. That's the blank test I'm about to start working on. Normally that would be a nice click for the answer key. Not sure why it's not there. And I'm working on these videos right now. It's kind of dumb to come work on the, you know, watch the videos without actually doing the problems yet. Uh, if you want some more review, here's spiral reviews. I'm up to, I think I finished 13. I don't know. I'm somewhere down here. I finished a bunch of these. There's 28. I'm hoping to get them all done. Uh, if you want the New York State uh, Regions exams, you got to go here and click on Regions exams. And there are the Regions exams. The actual, oops, that's, that's you got, if you want Algebra 2, they're right there. Common Geometry, this is Algebra 1, Common Core 2, Geometry, and then Algebra 2, click on that. There's only three of those. Three little paltry ones down here. Anyway, let's get started. Um, the first question talks about bias. Which survey will conduct... Con which survey is least likely to contain bias? Ooh, Dunkin' Donuts, thank you. A survey, surveying a sample of people leaving a movie theater to determine which flavor ice cream. I don't like picking one group, but that group really doesn't make a difference what ice cream they want. So that's a pretty good answer right there. Surveying the number of football they're members of a football team determine the most watched TV sport. Nope, they'd all pick football. Serving a sample of people leaving the library determine the average number. Nope, people leave the library read a lot of books. Serving a sample of people leaving a gym determine the average number of hours a person works. <laughs> what? Okay, that was like a duh easy question. All right, so again, uh, I'm going to show you how to do this mathematically because I think that's incredibly important. But then you also need to know how to do these algebraically okay so algebra no algebraically i'm gonna show you that i'm gonna show you how to cheat a little bit okay so uh this one here uh i just think one of the easiest things to do is maybe just get rid of that negative right away i don't like negatives they drive me absolutely insane so all i'm gonna do is get rid of it by flipping this thing upside down that negative really just takes that whole thing and just turns it upside down right so now we have exponents raised to exponents. So what this really becomes is b, now exponent raised to exponent, I multiply those. So that's b to the 8th. How many have b to the 8th on top? That doesn't have b to the 8th on top. Oh, the rest of them do. And then the bottom is 2 to the 4th, a to the 4th. Well, 2 to the 4th, a to the 4th. Everybody gets the 4. Everybody gets a little bit of love from 4. 2 to the 4th is 16, a to the 4th on the bottom. I believe an A was supposed to be there. Let me check. Oops, don't have the answer key up. Probably should. So I don't make a dumb mistake. Yeah, there was supposed to be an A there. So there you go. There's the answer. There's supposed to be an A there. All right, moving on. Expressed in simplest form. Now, because there's negatives under the radical, we know we're going to have I. So these two answers don't make any sense whatsoever. And then we're going to do this. This is negative 9 times 2 minus the square root of negative 16 times 2. The square root of negative 9 is 3i. The square root of negative 16 is 4i. Again, they have nothing to do with being negative. So 3i square roots of 2 minus 4i square roots of 2 equals, you guessed it, negative 1i square roots of 2. How about we check out a survey or two? Yeah, so there we go. Important stuff. Uh, 50 or more polls. That's actually not important. It's 150 members is important. This is going to be our end value here. And 40% members. Now, what they asked was, do you use your membership as much as you'd like to? That is a yes or no kind of a question. Because of that, it is a proportion. 
Now, in order to calculate the proportion, oh, what, what are they looking for? We're looking for margin of error. And remember, the formula for margin of error is z star times standard deviation. Now, in this case, our standard deviation, well, first of all, in this case, our z star score, which is really going to be 2. But really, before a 95% confidence interval, that really should be 1.96, but New York State decided we're just going to do it 2 to make it life easier. So really what we got to do is figure out what our standard deviation is going to be. So we'll come over here. And the formula is P times 1 minus P over N. Apparently you have to memorize that formula. I don't know why they would give you all the other easy formulas and not give you this one on the formula sheet. I guess that's just growing pains of stupidity. So 0 0.4 times 1 minus 0.4 all over What's my end value? My end value is 150. So I come over to the old calculator. I do control radical, control division. Uh, 0.4 times 0.6 divided by 150, and I get 0.04. So my standard deviation is 0.04, but my margin of error will be two times that, which is going to be equal to 0.08. It really should be plus or minus 0.08, but 0.08 is fine for today. Which statement is true about the graph? These. Okay. So the y-intercept of this is this, and the y-intercept of that is that. You ought to know that all exponential functions, unless you have some trans, um, translation on them, will all go through the 0 0.01. So 2 to the x is going to go like this something like this. And then if you graphed on your graphing calculator uh, 5 to the x, it's going to be pretty much the same until it hits about there, and then it's going to go crazy fast up. So they do not go through 0, 2, and 0, 5. They do, however, go through uh, 1, 2, and 1, 5, right? Did I say that right? Yes. If you plug in a 1, for this, you get 2 out. You plug in a 1. For this, you get 5. That's how you tell what the base is by checking out what 1 is. Both graphs have a y-intercept of 0, 1. Yes. 2 to the x is steeper. No. 5 to the x is steeper. Both graphs have y. Yep. And, yep. There it is. Neither graph has a y-intercept. Neither graph has an x-intercept. But they sure the heck have a, I don't know, whatever. I mean, blah, blah, blah. That's not good writing. Sorry about that. But no, this is not true either. They don't have an x-intercept. Remember, they approach this line, which is the line y equals 0, asymptotically. Not going to try to spell it because it's too early. All right, here we go. Uh, well, I guess I think what I would do on this problem is simply just stow in the answers and figure out what it is. But that's not fun. You know, that's just kind of boring, right? Who just wants to do that? We want to do some math. So let's check it. Do, 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 do. So you get 2x minus 4 equals. Now, if you square that, don't forget you have to, excuse me, write it twice and double distribute. So x squared minus 4x plus 4. Bring this crap over. You get 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 8. x minus 2 x minus 4, and I get x equals 2, and x equals 4. It should come as no surprise that I get those two answers. Now comes the fun part. You actually have to check them, because they probably both don't work. So, although I just went through this entire exercise to get these, all I'm really going to do is check these anyway to see which ones work. Now, I don't have to check the first ones, because I know those aren't right. So I'm going to check 2 and 4. Actually, what I'm going to check is probably just 4, but no, I better check them both. So 2, control var x, enter, looking down at my graph, it's the square root of 2x minus 4. Do not put the equal sign in. Do not. And then you just do x minus 2. I don't know why I just did that. They're both 0, so 2 works. Now let me try 4. 4, control var x, enter, hit the up arrow. Enter, enter, I get 2, hit the up arrow, I get 2, they actually both work. 
So they both work. Oftentimes, one of them will be an extraneous solution, but not today, kids. Every time I go to save, I get a little bit of wonderful, wonderful Dunkin' Donuts coffee. It's bursting, going through my veins, probably causing me all kinds of problems later on in life. What do you mean later on in life? I'm old. I'm already later on in life. By the way, squared just means we're going to write this thing twice, right? And then we're going to double distribute or foil it, depending on what your teacher decides to call it. Two times two is four. They all have a four. That's kind of boring. This is plus three. That's, oh, what am I doing here? These should both be minuses, right? I didn't say they were conjugates. What am I, crazy? They're both minuses. So that's minus six square roots of x. Minus six square roots of x. That's minus 12 square roots of x. How many have that? Ooh, we're down to two. These two are for the really silly, crazy, not so smart kids that forget it, that you have to write it twice. I hope that wasn't you. And if it was you, get your act together, kids. All right, now we've got to multiply this thing. Negative times negative is positive. So that's positive nine. And the square root of x times the square root of x is really just x. Choice three. Why is that on a different page? That's weird. All right, moving on. Let's go. Which of the following can be solved by completing the square? So if you remember, the first step really in, in completing the square is making sure this is a one, it is, and then tossing the constant over and writing it with some squares. And what goes in the square is half of this, so x minus 3, and if we square that, we get 9. Oh, we didn't have to go that far. Well, I'd add 9 to both sides, and I'd get 30. Oh, I'd get 34 over here, but I don't know why they have adding 36. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. So we're going to just go with number one, choice one. There it is, because really that's what, that's what this is right here. This is choice one. All right, I was going overboard a little bit. Which of the following can best estimate the correlation coefficient for the data of the scatter plot? So first of all, it's going up. Looks like a curve, I guess. But it's going up, so it can't be negative. It clearly has a pattern. Even if this was a linear correlation coefficient, which it probably is, because it looks like this. Maybe it, eh, it's probably exponential. Maybe it's exponential. Ah, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It certainly isn't zero because there's clearly a pattern going on there. It can't be bigger than one, so that one doesn't make any sense. So your big answer is 0.8. That was pretty simple. All righty, kids. How are we going to figure out this baby? I wonder if the calculator can help us out. Tangent. Nope, not really. So, you have to remember that tangent is sine over cosine. So, therefore, cotangent is cosine x over sine x. you got to remember cosecant. Now, this one you can get help with. Cosecant. Notice how sine comes first. And then cosecant of the, of the reciprocal functions. And then cosine goes with secant. So cosecant matches with sine. So if you forget that one, at least that'll help you out. Cosecant is 1 over sine x. I'm going to teach you how to cheat. So in order to do this, you're just going to multiply by the reciprocal sine x over 1 times sine x over 1. Now, although I'm, I'm going to teach you how to cheat... It could be a part two question, and you need to know how to do that. By the way, the way I, and I probably went too fast there, the way I got rid of this is multiplying by the reciprocal, right? Because cosine x over sine x, what I really had at the original is divided by 1 over sine x. And you should know, if you're dividing by a fraction, you're really going to multiply by the reciprocal. So the answer is choice two. Now, I could use my calculator to do this. Since it's a part one question, that's not my calculator. There it is. So what I could do is on this is my original problem was this. Control division uh, cotangent. Oops, I should probably have something stored into x. Oh, I do have something stored in x. Four degrees. I have four degrees stored in x. Doesn't matter what it is. So uh, trig cotangent 
x over I'm having a hard time cosecant x whatever that number is there oh of course it gives us cosine 4 your calculator won't do that this calculator is a little bit different settings document settings let's go with approximate make default click OK there you go I get that and then I do okay I try my answers and then finally I get the cosine of 4 and I get the same thing and there it is so that's another way to do that I should have said cosine of X I should have said cosine of X which is 4 but so because I did this and this eh, it's a simple way to check it if it's a part two or three though know, you're not gonna be able to do that you gotta know what you're doing why can I not move Ah, here we go. What number am I on? My goodness, I just went crazy. Crazy. Here's 11. A common difference. Now, remember, when we're trying to find common difference, we're probably looking for an arithmetic sequence. Arithmetic sequence, right? So common difference is always found by taking a sub 2 and subtracting a sub 1 or a sub 3 and subtracting a sub 2, or a sub 4 and subtracting a sub 3. You're just taking the second term and you're subtracting the one before it. So negative 4x minus negative 7x. Well, negative 4x plus 7x is 3x. So it looks like 3x is the big winner. If that's true, I should be able to add 3x every time. Add 3x, yep. Add 3x, yep. Add 3x, yep. Add 3x, yep, there's my common difference. Pretty simple. All right, so this one is simply, can you remember all students take calculus or whatever fun thing you came up with? Now, you have to remember this is sine, right? And, the, and sine goes with cosecant. This is tangent. Tangent goes with cotangent. And this is cosine, and cosine goes with secant. And what these represent is where things are positive. Everything's positive up here. So, sine is less than zero. That does not mean less than zero. That simply means negatory, negative. So, sine is negative. We need to put some x's where sine is negative. Sine is negative here, and sine is negative here. Now, why? Because sine's positive here, and sine's positive there. Now, we're going to put some, this means this is positive. So, where is cotangent positive? Well, everything's positive here, and then cotangent's positive here. That was a heck of a star. Looks like this quadrant's the winner. You need to know this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, and 3 is the big winner. And I caught up with my notes. And that's 12. That's the end of this first video. All right, kids, keep checking back. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let me know what you think. Give me some comments. Tell me how much you love me. Don't tell me how much you hate me hearing about my coffee. Goodbye. Goodbye.